Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. Had a good day today. Went to Stephenville today, hang out with my kids and my grandkids, so it was a good day. Took Seth, Seth was so good. And then when we went to Dairy Queen to get um, him a milkshake, I was ordering his milkshake and um, he was clapping in the back seat. <laughs> so then I got cracked up and I got choked up because that was so funny. I was just trying to, I couldn't get the rest of my order. I was laughing so hard. It cracks me up. Well, I am a little sleepy today. So I'm probably not going to be on here for very long. Get my music over there. Get my Bible over here. <clears throat> Get everything going. I did make me some coffee, but now I'm hot. I was like, I was cold, then I was hot, then, all right, well. Anyway, it's all good. I have my fan on now. I have another fan behind me. I'll turn it on if I need to. So Miss Gracie is over there sleeping in my chair. I have another chair over there in the corner and uh, she's decided that if I'm in this chair that she's going to be in that chair sleeping. That's like her new nap place that she hangs out. Ah, such good coffee. I made hazelnut coffee. Alright, well let's Tonight we're going to talk about moving the heart of God. How do we move the heart of God? There's a new song out that I really like. I shared it today. I think it's my new favorite. Let's see if I can find it. It's called Move Your Heart. I just want to move your heart. So good. Such a good song. There's just so many good new songs. Um... And this is what I, I mean, this is all I listen to. So I don't get on the radio and listen to other music. I don't listen to country. I don't listen to rock. I don't listen to those types of music anymore. So Christian is all I listen to. And there are so many good praise and worship songs that are out right now that are new. Many of them I haven't even heard yet. I'm listening to Brandon Lake right now sing uh, Fresh Fire. Such a good song. I've heard this one on the radio. The one that I'm going to share, I've heard on the radio too. But let's jump into some prayer, okay? God, we just praise you and thank you, God. We know that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. We just thank you for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us and for your protection and your provision God we thank you that you are our creator our sustainer excuse me you are our shelter in the storm you are our strength and our refuge God God you are the righteous judge you will judge all unrighteousness God you are magnificent and powerful and mighty but yet you're loving and kind and compassionate you're faithful God you're you are patient, God. You want none to suffer. You want none to perish, God. We love you, and uh, thank you for loving us, God. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We pray for the lost, God. We just cry out for their souls. We pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We just pray for them to see where they are, to return to you and to repent, and to have their relationship with you reconciled. God, we just pray for um, truth. We pray for all truth to rise, God, above any lies that are out there. We pray for all truth. We pray for your truth, God. 
We pray for all the people that are in disaster situations, God. We just pray that you would meet them where they are. That people, you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus for them. God, I just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. God, there's been so many the past two years especially. I just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. I pray that if anyone's sick, God, that you would heal their bodies. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright. Well, I'm going to read. I'm going to read first what I wrote uh, this afternoon when I got in. I am really sweating now. Ugh, and now I've got this hot coffee. That's just not going to help. Okay, so I hope you... I hope some of you get a chance to listen to the songs before I do this share. I just love this song and message. I think it is my new favorite song by Maverick City. Music in Upper Room. I love these lyrics. I just want to move your heart. It's all I want to do. I just want to stand in awe and pour my love on you. No matter how much the cost, I freely give it all to you, all to you. And that's just part of it. That's just part of the chorus. There's so many different parts to this song. So every part of this song is so powerful. How do we move God's heart? Is it sacrificing for his kingdom? Is it us laying down our lives for him? Is it a song of praise from our hearts? Is it obedience no matter what the cost? Is it spending time in his word and prayer? Is it walking in righteousness and truth? There are several ways to move God's heart. The most important way is by accepting Jesus as our Savior. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. All right, so that is what I shared today. And if you get a chance, go listen to that song. It is very powerful. Very powerful. I'm not going to sing it to you. Oh. Somebody else is listening to that song at the same time. I uh, hate that when that happens. Just what are the chances? Well, I'll listen to this one. I like this one too. Can't get it to, well, it's not working either. What's wrong with my music? There we are. Yeah. Alright. I have to find something else. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Let's do that one. Maybe nobody's listening to that one right now. I don't have a lot of battery on this phone. I need to put some more battery on it tomorrow. Okay, I'll just use it for this though. All right, well, let's jump into some scripture. I like this song too. It's called um, I Speak Jesus. It's a good song too. Okay, so I really couldn't find anything about moving God's heart in scripture, but I found scripture about pleasing God because I believe that when we do please God we do move his heart so let's go to um, okay let's do Hebrews thirteen sixteen.
Okay, so Hebrews 13, 16 says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. All right, well, I want to skip up to 15 and read that again. Okay, so, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, because I believe that God loves praise. And if we want to move God's heart, we need to praise, and we need to praise from the heart. We need to mean the words that we're saying, not just be mouthing them. We need to mean them from our heart that, yes, God, you are this to me. I connect to this song because I remember so many times that you have done this very thing for me. Uh, to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Yes. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So, um, he wants us to walk righteously. That, I would believe, would be doing good. And to communicate. I'm thinking prayer. You know, to communicate with him. That it is a sacrifice that pleases God. That when we take the time to do what he wants us to do, and to pray to him, it moves his heart. When we obey, too, it moves his heart. He wants us to be obedient. So let's go to Romans 12, too. I like this verse anyway. It is one of my favorites. And it's so true, we can't conform to the world. We have to be transformed through Christ. Okay, Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. You know what? I'm going to read one also. So starting with Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So we are not to be conformed to this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, when we are not living for the world and we are living for God, I believe that that pleases Him. And I believe that it moves His heart, too. It moves His heart closer to ours. Okay, let's see what else we can find here. Okay, Psalm 48. Probably just read like a couple more. These have been really short lately. And I kind of apologize, but I've been trying to shorten them too. And still get all the 
all the parts in. Okay, so Psalm 40, verse 8. says, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy will is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great con congregation. Lo, I have not refra refrained my lips. O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great con congregation. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Okay, that was a psalm of David. So, he's not hid the righteousness. So he's, he's walking in the righteousness. He's walking in the faithfulness of his salvation. He hasn't concealed the loving kindness and the truth from everyone. So he is being obedient to what God wants him to do. I think obedience moves God too. It moves his heart. I believe it does. Okay, let's see if we can find one more that kind of goes with the theme for tonight. Okay, let's read First Thessalonians two four. Thessalonians 2 4 says but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel even so we speak not as pleasing men but God which trieth our hearts for neither at any time used we flattering words as ye know nor the cloak nor a cloak of covetousness God is witness So again, we put our trust in the gospel, and we don't try to please men, we try to please God. You know, I think that moves his heart too when he sees that we're not trying to please men, we are trying to please him. So I believe that that's all that I think really fits with this. Again, it's like I get this list, and sometimes not all of it even goes with it. So maybe something that I said tonight will resonate with you. And um, will remind you that We can move God's heart. We can. There are ways to move God's heart. You know, Abraham, the story of Abraham, um, he, um, he would reason with God. He would negotiate with God. You know, I believe that God has a will, but we can make our requests known to Him. I'm breaking out the straw because it's just easier when you have lipstick on. And you just throw that away and you don't have lipstick on your cup. Okay, so these are my notes from this morning. Or are they? Well, that's yesterday morning. 
this this morning. Okay, so good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day, child. I so said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for a new beautiful day. Please keep us safe today. Please let the rain stay away and for Maddie to have a good day today. Help me to be a good helper too. Please let this be quality time and not a tolerated time. Help me to be your servant. I just want to move your heart, God. I just want to move your heart. I love this song. I want to sing it for you soon. Help me to organize this summer better. And he said, child, just go be your helpful self with a better attitude than yesterday. I had a really <laughs> stinky attitude <laughs> during quiet time. I got called out on it. And you will do fine. And you will move my heart. My heart is moved when my children do what I ask in obedience, no matter the cost to them. My heart is moved when a song of praise comes from the heart, not out of pride. My heart is moved when my children walk in the Spirit and my righteousness. That is how you move my heart. When my children are seeking my face through my word, prayer, and praise, it moves my heart. So much that all of you do moves my heart because I care deeply for all of you. I said, thank you, God, for meeting me this morning, for getting me up early so I can go help my daughter also. Thank you for this time. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, child. Your obedience to me moves my heart. Keep moving my heart, child. Keep being obedient in all I ask, child. Make good choices and receive your health back. Lay your life down for my service, child. Give all you have for me, child. The reunion is at the door. Finish your race strong, child. Finish it strong. The land of beauty and perfection is soon. So be ready for Jesus to come. Keep sharing my truths in the gospel of Jesus. Try to move my heart every day, child. And I said, Maranatha, God. You know... Um, I'll have to answer her later. Um, so let's try to move God's heart by being obedient, by seeking His face every day through His uh, word, through prayer, and through praise, and through service to others. Uh, singing, worshiping, and meaning every word, and being from the heart and not just some lyrics that you're mouthing. These things move God's heart. Uh, sacrificing um, our life for His service, that moves His heart. Obedience. He really, obedience is a thing that he really looks for. He wants us to be obedient. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be truthful. I'm not obedient all the time when he asks me to do things. Like he asked me to go yesterday to go do what I did today. And I just was not physically feeling it. I felt better today. So. That's good. I think that my medicine is too high of a dosage and um, I'm working on reducing it to see if I get to feeling better and eating less sugar. I think if I'll eat less sugar, I'll feel better. That is so good and that's going to keep me up me awake the rest of the time. I hope it doesn't keep me awake tonight. Okay, how do we want to do the plan of salvation tonight? 
All right, we talked about pleasing God, moving God. this one. I wish I had the little I don't know what I did with the little thing that I was folding out but I'm not going to look for it now and I cleaned off my desk so I have no idea where that went but we'll just we'll just read it the little man in sin and Jesus on the cross those are the first things that I'm going to read our sin separates us from God the light on the right represents God. God is perfect, holy, and loving, and has provided a way for salvation. In contrast, the man in darkness represents man in his sin, separated from God. Sin is more than wrong thoughts or actions, but a heart that is inclined towards evil. Jeremiah 17, 9, the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23, apart from God's grace, man is without hope. We are without hope, apart from God's grace. Jesus paid the debt for our sin. The cross is a picture of God's grace. God sent his son Jesus to earth as a man. Jesus died on the cross for us. So that he might take away our sins. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Romans 5 8. Jesus took away our sin in his own body on the cross so that he could bring us to God. 1 Peter 2 24 and 3 18. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 There is nothing we can do on our own to pay the penalty for our sin. If we could, then God would, ha would not have sent his son to die for us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sin. So after Jesus died... I'm going to show you these pictures. After Jesus died, men buried him in a tomb sealed with a huge stone and guarded by soldiers. And then three days later, God raised Jesus from the dead, declaring that he truly is the Son of God and that God is satisfied with his payment for sin. Jesus then appeared to many people before returning to his Father in heaven. So this next part says, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the only way. The only way we can come to God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus has paid the penalty God demands for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, God, except through me, John 14, 6. But just knowing these facts does not secure salvation. We must respond to God's grace by trusting in Jesus Christ alone. As the only one who can forgive our sin and give us God's gift of eternal life. So this next one is... Trust only in Jesus. Trust only in Jesus. The penalty for sin is eternal separation from God. But Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life with God. We need to accept this gift God offers. The way we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ is by trusting in Him alone for a complete payment of our sin. The Bible says that our sin is removed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, Romans 3.22. Are you trusting in Jesus for your salvation? The Bible says you can. 
I got my camera is yellow again. I don't know why it does that. So weird. All right, whatever. Okay, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. Now it's green. Ah, now it's normal. Okay, sorry. <laughs> if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. If you are trusting in Jesus for your salvation, tell God by praying something like this. So I'm going to say this prayer and then I am going to leave a space to where if you would like to repeat it, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior tonight, just repeat this prayer. Now, prayer is not what saves you. It is the belief of Jesus that saves you. So, dear God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. I trust Jesus alone to forgive me and take away all my sins. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember, it is not the words of a prayer that save you. God saves you when you respond in faith to his grace. If you trusted in Christ today, Jesus promises you in John 10, 27, 28. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So the next page are these emblems right here. Because you were saved by the precious blood of Jesus, you should follow God and learn to please Him. Please Him. Move His heart. Here are some of His requirements for you to grow spiritually. Love God and all people. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Pray to God constantly. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Study the Bible, God's Word daily. Start with the Gospel of John. Read one chapter each day. Like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the Word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. 1 Peter 2, 2. Meet regularly with other Christians, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Hebrews 10.25 Tell other people about Jesus. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark 16.15 So if you invited Jesus to be your Savior, welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
You are now safe, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His Son, His only Son, which is the only way. This is the only path to heaven. That is the only way to move towards God, to move His heart towards you, is to accept His Son as your Savior. All right. It is time to do God's blessing. And I guess to get off of here. Just seems like it gets shorter and shorter every night. I, I feel like I'm forgetting things, but then I go over everything in my head. And I've done everything that I normally do. I'll just, maybe I'm talking faster. I don't know. I don't think I'm reading quite as many scriptures. Excuse me. I'm trying to focus on the ones that go with the lesson the most. But um, if you think of any scripture that you think fits with this, then please put it in the comments. Okay, this is a blessing from God in Numbers 24 through 26. Six. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord Make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. Wow, peace is great. Alright, well, my friend Josie didn't make it tonight. And I'm sorry I was a few minutes late. I don't even remember what I was doing tonight, right before I came in here. Probably getting my coffee. I think I was getting my coffee and getting this. Alright, well, let's go ahead and pray. Let's pray that every day we would move God's heart. That He would show us more and more of what He wants of us. And that we would be obedient to whatever He calls us to do. God, we just come to you, and we just are so thankful, God. We're thankful that you love us, and that you love us as your children. We just pray, God, that you would help us to move your heart every day, God. That you would help us to please you. That you would help us to unashamedly share the gospel and share your truths, God that you would give us the boldness that we need to do that. That you would help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus everywhere that we go. God, that we would minister to other people. God, that we would move your heart through ministry. That we would move your heart through singing praise and worship music. That we would move your heart, God, in so many ways. God, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray, God, that you would be with them. We just pray that you would heal their bodies, God. And we just pray, too. I pray for my friend Josie. I pray that you would give her healing for uh, of what she has had. And, God, we just pray for our youth as we get ready to go to camp next week, God. We just pray that you would open hearts and minds to what you want to teach them, God. In our youth, in the leaders, and in the people that are putting on this camp, God, that you would be with them, that you would be with the people that are going to cook all the food, God, that you would bless them for their service. God, there's just so much to go into putting a camp together. Just be with all these people, God. Be with the parents as their children are away. God, I just pray for... Uh, a revival in our hearts, God, that we would be revived and that your heart would be moved, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I am still sleepy. And it's hard to pray when you're sleepy. I'll probably be awake in a minute. <laughs> I'll, that coffee will kick in and I'll go, 
Well, sleep was a good thing. I was thinking that I was going to do that, but I might just be up later. All right, well, have an awesome rest of your night, and have an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. I don't have any exciting plans for tomorrow. I think I'm probably going to do laundry and maybe do something else around here. I have so many projects. I'm going to try to get some things organized for next week. Anyway, God bless you all and your families abundantly. Much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.